Be good, thank all you. All right, so look, just explain <laughs> your personal situation mm. to me, if that's all right, mm. so we kind of we kind of know where we're at. What's going on? So I was actually living as a trans person for um, a total of six months this year. Before that, I'd had gender dysphoria. I'd been questioning my gender for many, many years. And I really was susceptible to these ideas that are pushed these days that you see online, that this oh. is totally normal, self-identifying, you can choose anything you want. So I was like, OK, maybe the reason I'm unhappy with the way I look is because of that. Um, and as we're now seeing in Scotland, this new bill is basically saying anyone can identify as anything they want. And within three months, they can legally change their gender. Mm. OK, I don't advocate for that. I think what Nicola Sturgeon has done is a complete slap in the face to all Scottish women. It's like she's taken a piece of haggis and just slapped all these women across the face. You know, oh. all the all the things the suffragettes fought for. So my issue was, you know, when I was living as a trans person, I was respectful of all women. The issue I'm having is the fact that 16-year-olds can self-identify that men can go into women's restrooms mm. and potentially assault and rape women. There are many cases of uh, men putting on a wig and going into women's restrooms to assault women and young girls. You know, how can we allow this? You know, there's a, such a minority of people that identify in these ways in Scotland, yet it's become the mm. biggest debate in the country. Yeah, well, I am amazed with the kind of vigour that the SNP, and it's fair to say as well, Scottish Labour and a couple of the other parties have really gone after this, given... Mm the proportion of people mm. whom you could argue this directly impacts right. and compared to, you know, all women, I suppose, all children and things like that. Could you just talk to me a little bit about what you know about the percentage of it? Because they say the SNP is saying, well, look, it's a, it's a marginalised group of people, often have very bad mental health issues when it comes to gender dysphoria and things like that, and this would be a big help to them. But I'm just wondering how many of those people is actually helping versus how many people it might harm. I mean, if you look at the fact that there's millions and millions of women in Scotland, right, mm. and the number of people with gender dysphoria, which is a mental health issue and we should treat it as such, you know, we should be helping these people. Yeah. We shouldn't be saying, go and identify it and we're going to praise you, we're going to reward you for that. You know, dress as a woman and you're going to be praised. We should be supporting these people. But, um, you know, the statistics are insane. I mean, I'm going to show you in a, a weird way, but oh, I've got a box go. of Scottish shortbread here. Right, let's move this out of the way. Let's do it properly. Okay, well, so I want you to guess last year, how many people in Scotland do you think legally changed their Last gender? year, how, how many people in Scotland legally changed, changed their gender? So they had a medical oh, diagnosis yeah. after living as trans for two years. I wouldn't know where to start, mate. Go on. Take okay, away. well, have a guess as well how many biscuits you think are in this box. How many biscuits are in that box? I'm trying to see if it's got a sign on it. I don't know. I've, oh, I've, I've, 50. Okay, oh, so there's, oh no. well, there's uh, two packets. So there's about, I was going to say, that's a bigger box. Yes, So course. there's about 60 or 70 Scottish shortbread biscuits okay. in here. Okay. Oh, and I'm using this to compare how small a minority this is. There were only 30 people in Scotland last year that legally transitioned. They got a certificate. They went through the process. Seriously? 30 people. So there's less people uh, than there are shortbread biscuits in this box right here. So I'm just trying to equate that to how small of an issue this is, how, you know, the Scottish Parliament's trying to debate this as the biggest issue in Scotland, when really the issue is women's rights being taken away. So right. 30 people in the whole of Scotland? Legally. So there, of course there are thousands of people that yeah. self-identify, yeah. but 30 people legally went through the process, whereas they got a medical diagnosis, they legally changed their certificate. So, so if this is Scotland yeah. then, it would equate to like... This like, box, of, basically this is the box. Like, like that. Every biscuit, I mean, you know, if every biscuit was a person in Scotland, yeah. there's more biscuits here than people it that... It would, and there would just be like a crumb of Literally. a person. And now the whole thing has been changed. So what I'm trying right. to say with this... Um, um, you know, statistic yeah. is the fact it's such a small issue. Why has it become the, you know, the second biggest thing that Scotland has ever debated? When it comes to kids and people who were 15 or just turned 16, oh, I was absolutely, I mean, I, <coughs> I struggle to run my own life now, right? But when I was 15 or 16 years old, I was not in a position whatsoever to make a life changing thing. Mm. Fair play, maybe some people are. I absolutely wasn't. And I think a lot of 15 year olds will be the same. What damage could it do to someone who maybe they maybe they're gay, maybe mm. they are, are a bit confused, maybe they've just got a lot going on uh, in terms of mental health and their sexual identity at that age, right? Do you think that we're going to end up with people who are rushed into making a very big decision and that could cause them more issues down the line, your views? Well, absolutely. As a teen, when you transition and you go through the process, it is irreversible. And teens don't realise that, you know, many teens go through phases. You know, everyone's had an emo phase, a goth phase. Some people have had a chav phase. We all go <laughs> through phases. And, you know, this is a mental health issue. And it wasn't a thing a long time ago, you know. Think back to the 90s, you know, when, when we grew up. It wasn't an issue. It's suddenly become an issue that every single kid is 
questioning their identity. And it's not normal and it's not right. These kids should be just going to school, having fun, learning about the world. They shouldn't be pushed these things. And they don't realise that it's irreversible. The parents are often persuaded through kind of trans charities and educators that say it's totally easy, it's totally normal to transition. Your kid can do whatever they want. You should celebrate this. And really, we should address the mental health If you would just say, just quickly, Mm. very quickly, actually, to... To Nicola Sturgeon now, if you if she was here, what would you say to her about this? Because they've really pushed this through. I mean, I think Nicola is a disgrace. I mean, she's like, she kind of reminds me of um, the Scottish version of Kim Jong Un's sister. She's like a mini dictator running Scotland. She basically wants. She's on a power trip. She wants to pass Scottish laws with the referendum. She didn't like the results, so she's trying to do another referendum about Scottish independence. So she basically has no respect for anyone else. It's what she wants to do, what she thinks is right, and she's an absolute disgrace for all women in Scotland. Strong stuff. And just on that, Olivia, if I may, quickly, because Westminster might block this. Is that right? Yes. So the news is that Alistair Jack, who's Secretary of State for Scotland, has released a statement essentially saying that he shares the concerns of the critics of the bill and he's going to look into how this new bill would fit with the Equalities Act, the impression Mm. being that he doesn't think it does, it isn't compatible with the Equalities Act, and he would consider a Section 35 notice, it's called, to block the royal assent of this bill, which would be sort of constitutional crisis stage. Um, You can imagine the massive political fallout, and Nicholas Sturgeon would frame it as Westminster riding roughshod over... She she would, but then Ollie London would pop up with his shortbreads (laughs) and make the point again that actually it's, it's this... In, in relation to the packet of shortbreads. People have got in touch, by the way, to say, why doesn't our economics and business editor Liam Halligan use more shortbread <laughs> in his analysis? We have a video wall for Liam, right? He can do it all with a packet of shortbread. But actually, if you look at this, and this represents Scotland, right, and the amount of people in Scotland, then, then where is it? There you go. That is the number of people who are actually directly affected by this in terms of the trans stuff. So maybe, maybe she wouldn't want to die on that particular hill, Olivia, because it wasn't, it's not the argument to make about Westminster shackling you to an unwanted marriage, is it, really, if only that amount of people are going to be affected? Yeah, and there is also the issue that polls actually suggest that, um, that it's not particularly popular legislation in Scotland no. either, and quite a lot of Scots can't quite understand why it's become this enormous issue. Um, so, yeah, whether Nicola Sturgeon will want to die on this hill will be a fascinating political element to the story. It will be. And uh, thank you very much, everyone. Can I just ask, Ollie, I think I've got time very quickly. I've not been shouted at too much yet, so I'm assuming <laughs> I have. I asked you to just say a little message to Nicola Sturgeon before. Mm. What about just to someone who is maybe 15 years old mm. or a bit younger, mm. who is in Scotland at the minute, who maybe was having some of the... What would you maybe almost say to your 15-year-old self if you if you had your time again? I'm just intrigued to, to find that out, really. Well, I would say to any child questioning themselves, you know, it's perfectly normal as a teenager to ask these questions, to have a different, you know, feel that you're gay or lesbian or bi, or you might feel that you're trans or whatever. It's perfectly normal for a kid to question themselves. doesn't mean that you have to go out there and physically change yourself and physically go through these irreversible surgeries and take these hormones that are going to give you many health implications and there's not much research out there to show the long-term consequences of these so i just want to say to kids just be happy with who you are you know mm. find love with yourself don't go changing yourself i obviously live with regret i've changed myself too much okay. um, i can barely move my face anymore but you know i don't want kids to go through this i've learned from experience you know kids should just be happy with the way they are so just be happy with the way you are don't fall victim to this kind of gender politics in the classroom just you know be happy and be confident with the, the real you Oh, good. Well, I hope you are happy now. Yeah. Because I think yeah. you're a fantastic. Desperate for a shortbread. As Desperate well. for a shortbread. <laughs> right. Good. So, well, I'll let you go and have a look. Ollie, thank you very much. Thanks very much. Real, Happy real Christmas. pleasure. That Olivia. Olivia, as always, thank you very much.